In a recent Gresty Academy teaser, we posed this little beauty limit. Uh, and this is how we solved it. Um, what we did was we said here, 1 squared add, 2 squared add, 3 squared add, da, 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 n squared. Well, the sum between i equals 1 and n of r squared is n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, and I'll only do this very quickly, over 6. And so therefore, this limit here, we can rewrite as the limit as n approaches infinity of n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, over 6, over n cubed. And that equals the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n cubed add 3n squared add n over n cubed and then when we divide by n cubed we get that that equals the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 add 3 over n add 1 over n squared over uh, sorry I've missed a 6 off there over 6 which gives us these two cancel out as n approaches infinity they will become 0 and that gives us an answer of a third okay now I've only gone through that quickly because uh, that's not what this video is about what this video is about is Riemann sums and definite integrals because in the comments to this teaser a gentleman called uh, Antarat Pal um, suggested using Riemann sums to answer this question and it's actually a very clever method so what we're going to do is let's just very very quickly go through what a Riemann sum is and, and I'll, what I'll do is first of all I will just uh, write out the two formulae so the definite integral between a and b of fx dx and this looks scary but I'm going to explain it in a minute and it actually isn't it makes a lot of sense limit as n approaches infinity of b minus a over n times the sum between i equals 1 and n of f a add b minus a i over n that's the first one and the second one is exactly the same except it has an i minus one at the end instead of an i and the reason for that is simply whether or not we take the left rectangle or the right rectangle uh, which we're going to see now so let's just quickly go through what what does this mean okay well let's just leave that there uh, and let's just draw a nice uh, graph here uh, on the xy plane of uh, y equals f of x so here we have f of x and here we have the point a and here we have the point b and we want to do the integral between the points a and b to find uh, the area so clearly the integral between b a f of x dx is this area here uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to split it into n rectangles and i'm only going to do this uh, briefly you can uh, uh, <coughs> so Basically, if there's n rectangles, then each of these little spaces here is equal to uh, b minus a, which is the difference over n. And so, therefore, this point here is equal to a add b minus a over n. And the next point is a add b minus a over n times 2. And then, finally, we get to this one, which is a add b minus a over n times by n minus 1. And these points here, well, that is f of a, and this here is f of a add b minus a over n, and then etc., etc., etc. Now, if we look at the formula, and I will just change colour uh, just to make it a little bit easier here, this b minus a over n is basically this distance here. And this f of a add b minus a i over n, depending on what the i is, whether it's the first partition or the second or the third or the fourth or whatever, is basically this distance here, depending on which one of the rectangles it is. So the, basically all this is, is that times that is equal to the area of one of the rectangles. And then the sum just sums up all of the rectangles over the area, which basically in the limit as n approaches infinity, that will be the same thing as the definite integral, i.e. <clears throat> it's giving you the total area. Now, that's only a very quick overview of, uh, of what we're doing. Let's go back to black. But basically, that's the, that's the idea. So, how do we use this to solve uh, our um, original equation? Okay, so basically what we do is we had our question, let's just write it down again, it was the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 squared add 2 squared add 3 squared add da 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 add n squared over 
n cubed. And what we can do is we can rewrite this as the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum between i equals 1 and n of i squared over n cubed. And we can rewrite that as the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n, the sum between i equals 1 and n of i over n squared. Remember, n in this case is a constant, um, so we can move it in and out of the summation as we will. Now, let's have a look at our formula. So we have the integral between a and b of between a and b of fx dx equals the limit as n approaches infinity. This is our Riemann sum. b minus a over n. This, I'm just basically rewriting the, the one that we, uh, uh, that we just worked out earlier on. f of a add b minus a i over n. Now, if we let a equals 0, b equals 1, and f of x equal x squared, then this whole thing here simplifies massively. So we have the integral between 1 and 0 of x squared dx equals the limit as n approaches infinity of, well, b minus a is 1 over n times the sum between i equals 1 and n of f of, well, a is 0, uh, i over n, and, well, f of i over n, if f of x is x squared, that equals the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n, the sum between i equals 1 and n of i squared over n squared. That's just putting i over n into our function. And this is exactly the same as this. So, therefore, in order to solve our limit here, all we need to do is do this definite integral, which is a, a piece of cake, which basically equals x cubed over 3 between 1 and 0, which is a third, which is the same answer that we got up here. So it's a very clever method. Um, now what we're going to do is let's do some more, because uh, just, to, just to get to grips with this. So here's some more that I found here. Here's number 2. Uh, so the limit between, uh, uh, as n approaches infinity, 1 over n, the sum between i over n, sine i minus 1 pi over n. Well, that i minus 1 means that we're going to use <coughs> the slightly adjusted formula. So let's write that down. So it's called the left rectangle uh, approximation method. And basically, that is the integral between a and b of fx dx. And all I'm doing, again, is just writing down the formula um, that we've already uh, established, b minus a over n. The reason it's worth writing it down is because it, it means it's simple to uh, to compare what the a and b should be. Add b minus a, i minus 1, so this is the slightly adjusted 1, over n. OK, so what we've got to do now is let's have a look at this and this. OK, well, clearly b minus a has got to equal 1. And from here, a is going to be equal to 0. So let's let a equals 0, b equals 1, and then f of x is going to be equal to sine x. So now let's fill all that in. So we have the integral between uh, 0 and 1. Oh, sorry, sorry, my apologies. There's a pi here, uh, which I didn't see. So actually, we'd have to let b equal pi. Um, yes, of course. So b would equal pi. So basically, it would be the integral between pi and 0, good job I spotted that, the integral between pi and 0 of sine x dx, okay, so now what we're doing is we're filling that in, equals the limit as n approaches infinity, well b minus a is pi over n, sum n, i equals 1 to n, of f of, well b minus a is pi and a is 0, so that's f of pi i minus 1 over n, and as f of x is sine x, that equals the limit as n approaches infinity of pi over n, the sum between i equals 1 and n of sine pi i minus 1 over n, which is exactly the same apart from this pi as our question. So all we need to do now is divide both sides by pi, and therefore 1 over pi, the integral between pi and 0 of sine x dx, equals the limit. 
So instead of having to do this limit, all we need to do now is the definite integral here. Okay, well that's a relatively simple integral. So basically that is equal to 1 over pi, the integral of minus cos x between pi and 0, which equals 1 over pi times 1 minus minus 1, which equals 2, oh, sorry, 2 over pi. So therefore that limit there is equal to the definite integral here, which is 2 over pi. So that's that one done. Now let's have a look at another one. Okay. Uh, again, we're going to use um, the same formula. So let's write it down. But this time we're going to use the right right angled approximation uh, method. So that's b over a, the integral between uh, a and b, definite integral between a and b of fx dx equals the limit uh, as n approaches infinity. These these do look hard, and the reason I'm doing a few of them is just because they're actually not that difficult, and um, it's just a question of getting used to them and seeing how they fit into this formula, b minus a over n i. And so this one we're using the uh, just the i rather than the i minus 1. Ah, I don't know what that is. Let's leave it. Okay. So basically, well, clearly from this position here, we know that a is going to be 1, and therefore we know that b minus a is going to be 1 as well. So we know that a is 1 and b is equal to 2, and f of x clearly, because of the square root, is going to be root x. So let's put a equals 1, b equals 2, and fx equals root x, and we get the integral between 2 and 1 of, uh, 1 and 2 of root x dx equals the limit as n approaches infinity of, well, b minus a is 1 over n, and that's where we get that bit there from, the sum between i equals 1 and n of f of 1 add i over n, and we know that f x is root x, so that equals the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n sum between i equals 1 and n of the square root of 1 add i over n, which is exactly what we want. So all we need to do to work out this limit is to do this integral here, and that equals, equals uh, 2x to the 3 over 2 over 3 between 2 and 1, which equals 4 root 2 over 3 minus 2 over 3, which is 2 thirds, 2 root 2 minus 1. And that is the answer to this limit. OK, so we're, we're doing well here. I'll tell you what, let's do a couple more. How about this one? OK, so again, uh, we're going to write down the, uh, uh, the formula. It's exactly the same. It's the integral between a and b of fx dx equals the limit as n approaches infinity of b minus a over n, the sum between i equals 1 and n of f of a add b minus a over n i. OK, now clearly b minus a is going to be 3, and because there's no a plus anything here, a is going to be 0, so we'll let a equals 0, b equals 3, and f of x is going to be equal to, well, e to the power of x. And so let's put that in, so that gives us the integral between 0 and 3 of e to the power of x dx equals limit n approaches infinity, well, b minus a, that's 3 over n, which is what we wanted, here, the sum between i equals 1 and n of f of, well, b minus a, 3 over n i, and obviously if f of x is e to the x, f of 3 i over n gives us, uh, sorry, let's stick it here, equals the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 over n, the sum between i equals 1 and n of e to the 3 i over n which is exactly what we want here. So all we need to do is do this integral here, and that is a child's play. That equals e to the x between 3 and 0, which is e cubed minus 1. So that is the answer to that limit. OK, let's just do one more final one. I think you're getting the hang of it now. Um, so this, again, we're going to use uh, integral between a and b of fx dx equals the limit as n approaches infinity of b minus a over n, the sum between i equals 1 and n of f 
a add b minus a over n i. And the more you look at this formula, the more it really does make sense once you just look at the, the Riemann sum on a, on a diagram. OK, so let's have a look here. Well, clearly, as we've got 2 plus something, we know that the a is going to have to be 2, and we know that b minus a is going to be 5. So we have to make a equal 2, b equals 7, and clearly f of x is going to be equal to log x. We know that from there. So let's stick these in. So that gives 7 and 2 log x dx equals the limit as n approaches infinity. Well, b minus a is 5 over n. Good, so we got that bit. The sum between i equals 1 and n of f of a is 2, 2 add 5i over n, which as f of x is log x, that equals the limit as n approaches infinity of 5 over n, the sum between i equals 1 and n of log 2 add 5i over n, which is exactly what we wanted there. Uh, so now what we've got to do is we've got to integrate this. OK, well, the integral of log x is equal to, uh, oh, sorry, between 2 and 7 is equal to x log x minus x. If you don't believe me, just differentiate this by the product rule and uh, you get yourself log x between 7 over 2. And that equals 7 log 7 minus 7 minus brackets 2 log 2 minus 2 which equals 7 log 7 minus 2 log 2 minus 5. And that is the valuation of that limit. OK, well, I hope you found this useful. Um, these questions, if you see them and once you get used to them, um, they really are not simple at all, but they fit a, a certain pattern, so they're relatively easy once you've had a few practice goes. If you found this useful, uh, please like this video and uh, subscribe to the Gresty Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.